<laughs> I've been waiting so long for this. Elugu sent me one of the new Orange Storm Gigas after I begged and pleaded with them via email. Because of course I wanted this thing, it's a giant 3D printer. So we're gonna head into another room, unbox, build it, and throw a couple prints at it, and hopefully we'll find out if it's worth the hype, or if I'm gonna fall down the same path as some other content creators. I am super excited about this, so let's just get started. Yeah, so I like, I don't, where do you put this thing? I completely cleared out one of my guest rooms. That's a mattress right there flipped up. And I, 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 took, I took everything out. It's gonna have to live in here for a few weeks, months. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to test this thing, but this is the build video, so find space to build it. I'm gonna unbox this portion first because it comes in two boxes, look at it. Uh, we're gonna unbox this one first, get the pieces on the wall or however I can arrange them. We're gonna then drag in the other box unbox that and kind of look at everything as we start to assemble it. But like, I don't even know what to print with this thing. If I'm being honest, before we even unbox this, I have no idea what I'm actually gonna use this for. I thought about Iron Man statues, life-size Pokemon or something, but like leave some comments down below while I'm building this thing in a time-lapse. Like what would you, what, would, what, what should I print that makes sense for my channel? Like obviously like I, I can print giant SpongeBob stuff like Emily's probably doing right now or, uh, R Rancor is like Uncle Jesse. I don't know. What do I do with this? Let's unbox it. <laughs> All right, I have the first bit out of this box. I think it's the heavier one, has the bottom base, the upper gantry, or like I guess the, the print head thing that moves up and down, the screen, um, a spool holder, and some of the other tools. Two things that pop in my mind right now are, look how much waste this makes. Like what do you, it, it, if you're like me and you like saving boxes because you're just a weird pack rat, where do you put this? It doesn't fit through most doorways. It won't fit in your attic. And like, what if you have to return it? Could you imagine try having to return this thing? Oh my. Yeah, so I'm gonna get this package back up. Sheesh. Hot. Are you guys hot? Wow. Um, everything's unboxed. This is it. I actually had the idea initially to try to build this with no instructions. Looking at it now, I think I could have done it, but it's too late. You guys would never believe me anyway. Uh, I probably have to do that like on a live stream. Anyway, you have the base gantry here. Now, honestly, not a lot of different hardware and parts, uh, just a lot of long bolts, the filament runout sensor, some brackets that I assume are going to be for like the, the tool head and the screen. You have the upper gantry thingamabobber that lowers up and down. You have the left and right gantries. They look exactly the same, but I'm wondering if they are labeled. You have the crossbars with an LED bar and a plane bar, and then all the stuff behind me that we already talked about. So there's not really much to like do, except just build it. It'll probably be like a 15 or 30 second time lapse. It's not really a big instruction manual either. It's either good or bad. Um, let's build the thing. Is this probably bad for it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel right sitting on the bed. This thing is huge, and it weighs so much. Pretty pretty straightforward to assemble. I, I'm standing down here. I'm tired. Um, some odd choices. Uh, like the the USB stick is just down here. Someone's foot is just gonna snap that right off. Uh, by someone I mean me. So I'm probably gonna get like a USB extension cable or like a. I don't know, we're gonna figure, can I get to the bottom? No, I can't. Um, yeah, uh, the screen's in the front, the filament's in the back, that's annoying, you gotta walk around. This is a pretty standard um, aircraft barrel jack thing right here. Like this is, a, this is a pretty normal connector, a four prong. So I'm probably gonna get some type of extension for that. 
This way I can walk around more with it. I don't know why I want to, but I feel like that can be important. Make sure you plug everything in the right way. Don't forget the filament detector, run out sensor plug. It's kind of hidden in the back frame. That's pretty easy. Um, there's one run out sensor for the spool holder on the machine. And then there's this nifty little five kill or larger spool holder roll thing. Like um, you put a big roll in here and it rolls on the rollers. And there's another, there's another run out sensor like right there for it. This way you can, you, you need bigger rolls. Um, comes with all the little basic extras, some extra nozzles and stuff. I think it has a 0.6 stock, maybe a 0 0.8, 0 0.6. It has a bigger nozzle stock. Solid frame, absolutely beautiful build. Honestly, I, I am very impressed by Elegoo. This thing is rigid. Um, I went around with a power drill. You probably saw that in time lapse. I had it on its lowest torque setting. So like any resistance and it stopped just to run everything down or else you're sitting there with the Allen key losing your mind. I couldn't imagine that. And then I went around and snugged everything down by hand. Um, the, uh, the run out, the, the chain, the Caterpillar chain, easy to install, plug everything in, pl plug in the print head. You need to like align the print head, which is weird. You think they just would have put like a dowel pin. So it, it, it's just perfect. Um, but let's, Let's fire this thing up. I'm gonna to try to go through the calibration and not destroy the bed, bend it, or dig into the bed. Or D all of the above. Okay, I might have forgot to hit record during the entire leveling process and I started a print, but it was super easy to do. I'll show you some of the screens. Once it's done printing in about an hour and a half, um, hour and 53, then we're going to uh, send something real big. I need more filament. Hey, so we're in the future. We finally got some prints off of this thing and I had to shave my beard. Yeah, I don't like it either. This was the test print that came off of the printer. And honestly, for a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and such a large machine, this came out great. And I have got to stop testing stuff in white filament because you can just not tell. But honestly, not bad. Next up was this little flower pot vase thing. Um, it would have been nice if they had included like a max size version of this for testing. Wouldn't that wouldn't that make sense? Like give us a small Buddha and a small pot and why not? It's cost you nothing to include the G code of a max size flower pot and a max size Buddha. That would have been a really cool test print. I mean, I don't know who wants a Buddha, giant Buddha statue in their room, but oh well. Now next up, you guys can probably already see it. I went and sent a near max size vase mode vase. This is one solid well, solid. This is one solid 3D print. This is a one piece 3D print that's, I mean, I, that's pretty tall, like one shot. And I was very surprised how well it handled this. Um, there is some layer separation on the bottom because I kind of just pulled it off the printer and it's currently just holding wasted filament right now. And it got a little wobbly at the top. I think that's kind of expected, but I, I just sent it. I watched part of the first layer and left. I realized while testing this machine and using it that my other machines have made me very comfortable with 3D printing. My Bamboos and my K1 Maxes and my Prusa. I, I just started this print and left. I did not watch the entire first layer. I actually sent another print. I didn't even watch the first layer go down. Um, it's the hula hoop. Where is it? No, it wasn't that. It's around here somewhere. I'll find it. But like, this is, this is what this printer is made for. It's made for a large one shot print that you can't do in pieces that don't make sense to do in multiple parts on smaller printers. Next up, I wanted to test all the beds at the same time. So I printed a, a hula hoop, a loop, a, a, it doesn't have any weight. So this probably isn't going to work, but like, ugh. yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Um, heh. it kind of works but it did a very good job at connecting all four of the beds. You can kind of tell where the jump was in certain spots. There's a little bit of a dip, but again, if you're printing this big, these minor imperfections shouldn't matter. And if they do, this isn't the printer for you. There are machines just as big, but they cost a lot more. Now, up until this point, I've only done the automatic leveling. I did try to print this thing and it was laying down pretty well, but this definitely exposed the leveling or the improper leveling that was done on the printer or just the, the fact that it was out of level. So then I had to sit there with these sheets and go through the actual manual leveling process. And I'm glad you can adjust the beds. That is a good thing that it's not all solid bed posts. Um, but this took 
over an hour to do and dial in and it's just a tedious arduous task because you have to do half of the bed and then move it over to the other half and you're trying to get them as close to zero but then the print head's in the way so you need to move it to the other point and then raise it up a little bit and then the screen says it raises it 0.7 but it actually doesn't so it definitely takes time but the fact that the bed doesn't move i should never have to adjust it again the only thing i'm going to need to adjust occasionally is my z offset and this is a problem I see a lot of other creators having. Um, Uncle Jesse, it's Boy in Space, uh, a couple other people on TikTok, that the Z offset in the firmware keeps getting lost or confused or deleted or replaced, and they keep scratching and digging into the bed. I haven't had that problem yet, which is fantastic, but I feel like it's only a matter of time. So Elgo really needs to sort out some of the firmware, which I don't understand why there's an issue with. This is just a larger 3D printer. There should be nothing there's nothing new here. It's just bigger and more reinforced. So if you can get the small printer to work, why can't you get the big printer to work? It just doesn't quite make sense to me. Anyway, with that, I decided not to send that decorative print again, because I realized that like the 3D print mill before it, there's a way to abuse this printer for something it wasn't intended for. And this is gonna speak to my cosplay folks. If you guys have been following my channel for a little bit, you know I like printing katanas and swords and large props and stuff, and typically, if you don't have a 3D print mill, you print a blade in sections. I have the 3D print infinity belt printer and I was able to print blades in long one shot pieces. However, this isn't the strongest way to print them because it's printing at a 45, it's still sectioned. This is actually still one of the weaker ways to print something. If you are familiar with printing, you know printing something standing up, this is the weakest way it's ever gonna be. Your Z is your weakest because you're just stacking layers on top of each other. The print mill lets you print it at a 45, but realistically, if I wanted to sit here and snap this in half, it would be trivial. It would be so easy to do. But on a printer like this, what if I could just lay the entire blade flat? Now, instead of the layers being like this, they're long ways. This is the strongest way to print something. And it did this in three hours, as opposed to the print mill, which takes a day to print a sword katana blade like this. Now, this came out like dookie. I printed this super fast on a low draft quality, and I had a little bit of layer shifting at the end here. Oh, look at, oh, right there, you can see it up there. Yeah, now this could have been because I was printing two at the same time, it was jumping back and forth. Maybe something's a little loose, maybe I was printing a little bit too fast, but it looks really good up here and it just lost it down here. So maybe it was wobbling or the supports, I don't know, but I was able to print this in one shot. So now I have two Inosuke blades. Now again, really low quality, I'm gonna work on dialing this in, but this is the strongest way to print a sword like this. This would snap, my belt printer would not be able to do this or this. This is ridiculous. And you know what? Because I'm gonna have to reprint these anyway. <sighs> yeah, that was a lot harder to do. Also, this is like 2% infill, not bad. Now I haven't got a lot of prints off of this because that's the other problem with this machine. How am I gonna test this? Am I gonna spend the next two months beating this up while we get closer and closer to its release and I'm sending prints at it? Prints on this take a while. Yes, the vase came out really quickly, but if I wanna print something big and structurally sound, it's gonna take days. And throwing multiple prints at that and still contending with some of the issues it's having with some of the firmware, that's just risky and filament is expensive. I'm gonna be honest, if Elugu didn't send it to me to test and do reviews on, I probably still wouldn't even have bought this thing because of the size, the sheer amount of space and volume it takes up. The fact that it really isn't that fast and it is still limiting. Like I can't print Iron Man suits on this. Iron Man statues maybe, but suits are supposed to be printed in smaller pieces. And the K1 Maxes and even some of the bamboo printers are more than capable of that. For what, 2,500 bucks I think this thing is going for? 1,500 dollars a It's right here. I don't know the exact price right now and I don't know if it's fully out and I'm sure there's gonna be some adjustments too. Um, this is for a different crowd for sure and might not necessarily be my audience. Am I happy to have this? Am I gonna put it to work and do some really cool stuff with it? Absolutely, but between the cost of the filament, the amount of space this thing takes up and the power consumption and the work that goes into it, it's just, it's an interesting printer. Um, I think Elugu just wanted to make something big and I'm very, very curious to see how they advance it, improve it, the firmware. Is this thing going to get good? Right now, I'm enjoying it, but if I follow suit with some of the people who have been having issues with it, I'm not looking forward to some of the headaches that I've seen them having. I'm definitely afraid of that. And it makes me scared to send big, long prints that are gonna take 
five kilograms of filament. As of right now, I can't recommend it to anybody unless you are really heart set and you see the potential and you know you can get past those issues and you wanna print just big stuff like a life-size Danny DeVito, I'm not kidding, stay tuned for that. And maybe it's up your alley, but right now it is just a eyesore that, uh, I don't know where I'm gonna put this once I put the guest room back together. It scares me. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave some comments down below. And I'm also very open to suggestions on what I should make with this. I wanna see where your guys' heads are at in terms of just my type of content and channel or what you wanna see printed with this giant thing. I'm gonna print some furniture. I'm gonna print some statues. I'm gonna print some dumb stuff. I'm gonna print some stuff I can destroy. And I'm gonna see if this thing makes my life any easier on some projects and if it unlocks other potentials for other, like a giant chess set or something. But that's gonna be it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I've been wanting to do this since I got it. Oh. Oh. Oh.